So let's first talk about growth and development. There is an actual difference between growth and the word development. Growth is actually an increase in physical size. So we're talking about the patient's increase in height or increase in length or an increase in weight. We know that growth tends to peak during infancy and the adolescent years particularly. So babies tend to grow very rapidly, let's say since birth to six months or 12 months. And we also know that there's rapid growth and development uh, with the teen years. So what do we mean by development? Development is also an increase, but rather than an increase in size, development is an increase in what we can do. Or you want to think of development as an increase in function. Development in humans tends to occur in a cephalocaudal or from a head to toe fashion. And usually we sequence our skills from a proximal or proximal area of the body out to the distal areas. So a proximal distal sequence is important and the cephalocaudal direction in which we grow from head to toe. Now in nursing or in healthcare, we use developmental milestones to measure the development of different patients, for example. In this case, we're gonna talk about developmental milestones as a standard of reference that we use to compare a child's behavior at specific ages and stages. One such tool that we use for developmental milestone assessment is the Denver Developmental Screening Test or the DDST. This test is used to evaluate both gross and fine motor skills. So when you think gross skills, think large muscles. And when you think the fine motor skills, think something like playing the piano or picking up a small pea or bean. DDST is also used to measure language and social skills of children. Usually it is used between birth to six years of age. And again, we are assessing the child's gross and fine motor skills. So we assess motor skills, language skills, and social skills. So we would assess, for example, if the child could wave to us or says bye-bye at a certain age. Can the child hop on one leg? Can they pick up a little uh, tiny peas, bean, corn, something like that at different ages and stages? Uh, we also assess language skills and different things. Now, in order to understand human growth and behavior, several theorists came up with different theoretical uh, discussions or information for us to consider as we care for patients. So on this slide, we are going to be discussing Sigmund Freud, who is considered the pioneer of personality development, and also he studied how our minds work. So I want to first talk about Freud's uh, stages of development, because those tend to be important to peds and we tend to be questioned on those. And I'm also going to quickly talk about how we develop personality according to Freud. So Freud had five psychosexual stages of development. He believed that each individual moves through specific stages and moving through these stages created unconscious conflicts. We successfully move through a stage when we resolve these unconscious conflicts or when we complete the conflicts. So Freud's five stages begin with the oral stage, which of course is infancy from zero really uh, to age one, or in some books it would say birth to 18 months. So you wanna consider the period of infancy as the oral stage. And according to Freud, at this stage, the baby is obtaining pleasure and comfort through the mouth or through the oral cavity. We then move from the oral stage into the anal stage. And anal stage is equivalent to the toddler in age or in years, if you want to think about it that way. And according to Freud, during the anal stage, the toddler is receiving gratification through controlling bodily excretions. And this matches uh, what we do in you know, in real life, by three years old, most children start to be potty trained. And that helps you also to remember. The next stage in Freud's stages of development is the phallic stage. And the phallic stage, also referred to as an early genital stage, is where the child identifies with the same sex parent. 
Uh, you may have heard of Freud's Oedipus complex or the Electra complex. And basically it's saying that the male child is favors or prefers the uh, mother and the female child would favor or prefer their father. This is a process of development because Freud looked at the triad of the parent and child. So male parent, female parent, and the child. He looked at that relationship. The next stage in Freud's developmental stages would be the latent stage. And this is equivalent to the school age child, ages 6 to 12 usually. And this is where the child starts to require some privacy, for example, will want to cover up or, you know, they're now a little more concerned about their privacy. In the genital stage, which is our adolescent, there's a focus on genital function now as it relates to sexual relationships and acquisition of a mate. So if you think of adolescents and beyond, as far as the genitals, they now represent sexual pressure possibly and the actual function to develop offspring. So real quickly, you can use the mnemonic at the bottom of the screen. Old age people love grandchildren. O for anal, age or the A for, O for oral, sorry, A for anal, P for phallic, the L for latent and the G for genital. So that helps you to remember some of Freud's information. Freud also examined how we develop personality and he coined the levels of awareness. He looked at the fact that the mind had three compartments, the conscious, pre-conscious, and unconscious mind. And he also examined the structure of the personality, which is what we're showing on the slide here. So as far as the structure, he believed that it was a three-tiered structure of personality. We had the id, ego, and superego. The id is our instinctive self. It's our pleasure-seeking self. It's the, as our slide says, I want to do it now, versus our ego, which tempers or is the mediator between the id and our superego. The ego is where we utilize our reality testing and problem solving and actual judgment before we uh, make a decision, or that would be that area of the personality. Our superego is where we develop internalized experiences. It's believed to be a more unconscious area of the mind, and it's what helps us to decide right and wrong. So the it is instinctive and wants to do it right away or has the urge, you can think of if you're driving and your it is going to tell you if someone cuts you off, you know, with road rage to just drive them down and run them over. But of course, we're going to have an ego that is going to utilize reality testing and problem solving and judgment and remind us that we can't do that because we don't want to hurt people. And then our super ego is going to use the moral compass. It's going to say it's not right to do that. And so it wants to run people over. Ego, uh, uh, maybe I won't run you over, but I'll drive you down and show you a finger or something. So just using life scenarios to help us understand. All right, so moving on from Freud, because we use all of this information in our interactions with pediatric clients and other clients throughout their development. Our next theorist is Eric Erickson. Erickson was a student of Freud's information and actually moved into expanding on what Freud believed. So where Freud has five stages of development, Erickson developed eight. And Erickson looked at the re relationship or interpersonal relationships rather than just the relationship between the child and the parent. So Erickson's stages now move from trust versus mistrust, that's the stage where the infant is usually trying to develop trust in their environment. And so if you feed them and they're allowed to sleep comfortably, and when they cry, we pick them up and we meet their needs, then that infant will develop trust. If you pay attention to Erickson's stages of development, they increase in complexity and they also seem to have some polarity. On one side is always the good thing like trust, 
versus something like mistrust, which is considered more of a negative. So if you look throughout, we move from trust to autonomy or self-direction in the toddler, to initiative versus guilt in the preschooler, to industry, developing industry or being industrious in the school age child and then moving into a sense of identity for the young adult versus if the teen is in a state of role confusion would be the negative and then we move into intimacy versus isolation generativity and integrity versus despair these are stages from infancy throughout older adulthood i'm going to apply erickson's theories more and so i'm not going to discuss them as much, but each time I talk about hospitalization at a different stage, I'm going to remind you what this would mean for Erickson. Another theorist uh, that we would have to examine if we're going to consider developmental stages is Jean Piaget. Piaget is a Swiss theorist who developed cognitive developmental theories, as in theories regarding how we learn or how we best develop cognition. This is especially important for us, especially when we have to teach and especially when we have to provide anticipatory guidance to parents or to caregivers of children. So the first stage, and I love Piaget because he only has four stages and so it's easier to remember. So his first stage was the sensory motor stage where the baby's learning to coordinate sensory input and their motor or movement. Uh, and so this continues from birth through two years old. And at this stage, there isn't much that we can teach to someone as far as their cognitive development. We know the baby is learning and acclimating to their environment. After two years old, we move into the pre-operational stage or the stage prior to where we can cognitively perform operations. In the pre-operational stage, we tend to use symbols for objects and we're more preconceptual. We can understand some things and we can be taught, but we can't yet cognitively uh, operate all functions, if you understand. A uh, concrete operational is the stage next, and it moves from 7 to 11 years old. During the stage of concrete operation is where we develop our rational thought. We're able to manipulate objects more, manipulate our ability to learn, and cognition actually increases more at this stage. Now, the fourth or last stage, according to Piaget, is the stage of formal operations. This is the transi transition from adolescence through adulthood. This is where we are able to develop mature abstract thought. So one quick way to understand Piaget, let's think of if we had to learn about the heart and circulatory system. If we are trying to present that information to a two-year-old, Maybe all we could say is, if feel right here, this is your heart. And maybe that's about as much as the two-year-old could cognitively accept and understand. For the individual two to seven years old that's in the stage of pre-operations, maybe we could literally show them maybe a Valentine heart, a red heart, and say, this is a heart. And we usually color it red, and it's inside your chest. And because they're not yet at the stage of operations, we cannot present much more of that information because they won't be able to cognitively rationalize and understand. At the third stage, concrete operational, still teaching the heart and presenting the heart, to a seven-year-old or a 10-year-old, we would be better able to present the information more logically. For example, we could say to a 10-year-old, this is the heart. It has four compartments and we could talk about it and maybe they could click in the four areas and they could learn that way. If we move into the adolescent formal operational period, we can then talk to this person about the heart. We don't have to show them the heart. We don't have to draw it. We don't have to say it's red because this person can perform cognitive activities in the abstract. So you can say to a 17 year old, today we're gonna talk about the heart. 
your heart is in your chest, your heart has four chambers, it beats, and we can present information. And that person wouldn't have to see it yet, wouldn't have to touch it yet, but because they're at the stage where they can think and be abstract, they could still learn this information. So I hope that helps you to understand what Piaget means by the different stages of cognitive 